All right, so this is what you'll see when you log into your LibApps account. Um, so Lib Apps, so the LibApps account is very different from your LibGuides account, which you'll be using to create your LibGuides account. Your, your lib guide. Um, so you can reach your lib guides page either through um, this link here or through the drop-down menu on the top left-hand corner. So I'm going to go to lib guides from here, and this is where you can create your lib guide or edit your any existing ones. Um, so here is so basically you don't really need to access any of these other pages. Um, because anything that you would need either in your LibGuides or LibApps pages is accessible from your LibGuides page. So, I'll, so, so there isn't much we're going to be using other than what's needed for creating LibGuides, which is just um, this box right here. But I also did want to show the Image Manager library where you can kind of hold a repository of all of the images you will be using for your LibGuide. So this is just linked to the Image Manager and you can either keep all of your images in the root folder, um, which is created as a default folder, or you can separate um, your folder, uh, all your images out by creating your own little hierarchy of folders. So all you have to do to create a new folder for your image manager is just enter in the folder name and create, and then it'll show here just the new folder um, as it's empty. So if you wanna move any of, um, the images you have in your root folder, any of the newer folders, you just double click on them and then select the drop down menu for the folder to whichever one you want to move it to. So we're just going to move this one to a new guide and then you'll, this is where you'll see it. And also when using the image manager library, you will not be expected to use the shared library in any, in any instance. Um, it was never really talked about, so we just assumed that you know you only you're you're only required to use your personal library. So that's a little bit on um, your LibGuides page. Um, so if you want to access um, all of the LibGuides that people have um, published at, to use as reference references. Um, if you go to the path of, um, at the top of the page and click the LibGuides link, this will take you to SimmonsList.LibGuides.com, where we just have this repository of all the LibGuides that have already been published. Um, you can see for each one of these slots, we have the title of the LibGuide, when it was published, number of views since um, the semester began, and if you put this little button for information, um, you can read a little kind of description um, that the student wrote about the LibGuide. Um, this isn't required either, but it helps provide a great little profile for your LibGuide um, if you just want your users to get a better idea up front. So that's how you access all the other LibGuides. Um, so we'll just go back to the LibGuides homepage. So I'm going to go back to the presentation just for the slides on selecting a topic. Um, because this is a very important thing to, um, you know, obviously you need to be sure of your topic before actually starting your LibGuide. There's nothing worse than, you know, being halfway through and then realizing this isn't really what I want to talk about, or even I don't have enough resources for this, I have to start over. So um, I'm not going to talk about all these individually. Um, hopefully some of you may already know what you want to talk about, or have a few topics in mind that you kind of are having trouble with narrowing down. So a good way to think about a great topic for a LibGuide is that it has to be um, narrow enough where users should come away from reading your LibGuide with a very um, thorough and well-rounded understanding of your topic, but at the same time it needs to be broad enough where you can collect anywhere between 20 and 24 reliable um, multivariated um, resources. Uh, you know, that, that really did a great job of explaining what you want to talk about. Um, some professors also really want students to pick out an institution in, that, that kind of connects with your topic, which it, it does sound like a lot um, to kind of work with, but that can be a massive help because these institutions in, in themselves, you know, can provide excellent repositories where you can find great resources. You know, they may have people working there who definitely know a lot about it, who you can talk to for any assistance. And um, hopefully this would be an institution that would be close enough where either you visited the institution in the past or, or it's, um, it's close enough where you could make one or two trips this semester. So, um, 
or if that's not possible, it should be one where you can access the resources online. So this should be institution that you can talk about at least in some detail, um, kind of on the home page of your LibGuide, but you don't have to explore the institution as thoroughly as you have to explore the topic. Um, it's just a really good thing to keep in mind when thinking about a topic you really want to explore in detail. So, and also it's, um, you, know, you, think you need to think about your topic in conjunction with what you want your audience to get out of it. So, you know, the people who will be looking at your little guide, um, unless you're creating a for a specific institution and a specific target audience, maybe outside of Simmons, um, you know, you'll have a great idea already of who will be looking at your LibGuide. So, you know, people who go here, um, grad students and people interested in archives, you know, um, photography, you know, special collections. Um, so uh, the topic you pick will hopefully have some connections to those areas and to what people are, inter are interested in here. Um, and this could also work in relation to different networks or communities, different clubs you want looking at this love guide. So if you're doing a study on, you know, history of photography in certain parts of the world, maybe um, a MIA would be interested in looking at the love guide or maybe using it for an activity or, you know, a group project or something. Um, but yeah, that's just um, some thoughts you should have for um, picking out topics for your love guide. So, we're going to kind of leave the presentation now um, as we go through a sample LibGuide. So this is one you really want to be set up and be logged into your LibGuide account because you're going to start working on this. Um, and at this point, it's not going to be very, hopefully it won't be as rigid where if anyone has any questions or if they just want some, everyone wants any time to just work on the LibGuide, we can definitely allow for that too. So here I'm going to create a guide and this is the page you should get when you're first setting um, setting one up from, uh, just from a blank template. You want to you want, you want to start fresh. You don't want to copy any layouts from existing guides. You don't have any. Um, so for guide name, I'm going to do tech movies from the 90s. And for a description, I'm not going to write one for this. Um, and then we really don't have to do anything you know, special for a guide type. It's just going to be a general purpose guide. Um, that's not really something. Um, it, it's not really something you have to, you know, choose a specific option for, um, because of you know the different range of topics we have already for lib guides. So we don't want to assign a group, and we definitely do not want to use a password for this lib guide. We have had a lot of problems in the past where. Teachers have tried to access their students' love guide, um, to create it, and just to look through it, and they weren't able to look at any pages of the love guide because it was all password protected. So we don't want a password, and we want it to um, be available at a community level. So we're going to create this guide, and this is the blank template that we have. Um, first thing I do want to point out here is this little uh, librarian box. So this is, this little segment right here is something you can set up on the account page of your love guide. Um, on the lib app end of your um, account where you can add a picture, you can add personal info if you want to just add your email address, people can talk, uh, contact you if they have any questions. Um, that is all completely acceptable um, to put on a lib guide, but you don't need to have it on there. So I'm actually going to take it out and it's deleted. So here's what we have now for a completely blank layout. So the first thing we want to kind of consider is how we want, well, I guess the first thing to consider is how many pages we want. So LibGuides are set up in terms of pages where um, you can separate pages, you know, based on, you know, certain subsets of your topic. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to bring up a couple LibGuides to use as reference um, while explaining this. So I'm going to... That's a good one. This is film studies one. So here, so here is how this LibGuide set up. Um, this librarian uh, separated out her content um, into pages based on um, certain films uh, that that actually showcased this county. So. She had one. Um, she had one page specifying an overview of each of these films, and 
and then they were kind of separated out from there. So pages you really need to use. So, so your professor will recommend that um, out of all the pages you, you um, create for this LibGuide, um, you have to have a home page, a further research page, and a page for your references. So you need a home page to kind of talk about the audience um, that you're creating this LibGuide for, about this guide in general, why this topic was selected, how important is it to you, if you um, did uh, want to use institution in conjunction with the LibGuide, this is where you would also talk about the institution, where it's located, its relation to the topic. Um, and then for further research, you just want to name some additional kind of, um, you know, different subsets of, resor of resources to kind of explore this topic even further that you weren't able to kind of explore um, during the rest of the LibGuide. So anything else you just wanted to add but didn't necessarily fit into the rest of it, you can just put it here. And on the references page, it's just a basic list of everything that you used, um, pretty standard, but um, creating this is, is very time consuming. So you definitely want to allocate um, a good portion of the time you use, you know, just, just for this. And also you do need between 20 and 24 resources. This number may change depending on who's teaching um, your reference class but it should always kind of stay around this number. So you create pages and you reorder pages from this page drop-down menu. Um, so if I want to set up just a couple of other pages to kind of go with this, parts of Silicon Valley, and then you don't necessarily need page descriptions, um, but you do need this to be a top level page. You can create additional pages that are sub-pages of other pages, um, but if you just want to create a page on the same level as home, it would be top level. I'll save it, and I'm going to create one more, and then create ones for So here are the pages as they appear in a um, default layout. We can reorder them um, by selecting this drop-down menu for page and then clicking on the reorder move pages option. So we can just kind of move them around here, however you want. We can also use this um, to create, um, to change the levels of pages. So you can make this into both these into subsets or you can kind of move them out of that. Just whatever you want, it'll allow you to do that as far as the order goes. And then you also have the option of um, changing the overall layout of the pages in general. So you can actually have them on the side of the libguide. So you would select this box for, um, actually this one. So you would select this uh, drop down menu here for the little picture icon. You would select tab and box options. So for tab options, um, this is where people can customize their layouts and choose different colors. So with this one here, you know, she chose kind of, you know, um, some really nice green colors just for, um, just to kind of go with her specific theme. So you can select different colors based on, you know, whether or not, so it, you can select different colors based on um, when the cursor is hovering over it and then when it's clicked. So these are the tab options, and then I'm just going to go um, we're going to do a white font. So um, it's still over to the default color here, but once you hover over the page or if you click on a page, um, it'll revert to, I don't think you can see that. Can people see that? People, it, it's, it's, it's more obvious here. Let me change it again. Um, there we go. All right, so that's a little more obvious there. So once you've clicked on a page or once you hover over it, um, it'll change into your custom color.
And the same thing can be done for your box options. So I'm just going to do that too. Okay, so that's how you kind of work with pages a little bit. And then here we have, um, so you can see there, there are a few columns set up here where um, the first two columns form about 50% of the layout and a third box forms. Um, actually, no, it's like 25, 50, 25 here. Yep. So this is the layout we have as default where um, you can kind of see the distribution available. So we can definitely change this. So here we have 25, 25, 50, where uh, the, beginning, the, be the beginning of the column will appear as the add box option. So every page can have different layouts. It's whatever you, know, whatever you wanna do. Um, you're gonna see a lot of different libguides when you look at um, the ones available for reference. Some of them will have just two or three pages, but with, you know, but these pages, th those pages will be incredibly long, um, contain you know, dozens of resources while others may have just Maybe, maybe split up a bit more, but then, you know, each one's a little bit less content overall. I would recommend doing a little bit like this to help make it a little more palatable for users, but it's all about your content, how you feel, um, you know, which layout, whichever layout you feel best expresses um, what you want to talk about. So at this point, that's kind of the layout um, as far as pages and columns go. So any features you want to add, anything at all has to be done um, through boxes. So if we go back to this um, libguide, there's no piece of information that hasn't been contained in one of these. So we're kind of luck, we're, we're pretty lucky in that we're able to work with a pretty nice variety of resources. So it's not just text or links. We can work with like different media, uh, RSS, RSS feeds, Google searches, we can do polls. Um, we can also do books from catalog. So on this page, um, adding a book like this only requires us to plug in certain fields for a predetermined layout. And then, um, so, so that makes it a lot easier. So we're just going to kind of go through that. Um, does anyone have any questions right now? Is everyone being able to access their LibGuide account? Okay, I'll do it. Okay, so we're going to start with um, the top box. So this will be an overview section where um, the customization options we chose for the box options were applied to the border. So we can change this whenever we want and it won't have an adverse effect on any of the content. So if I want to add any feature, I just have to first create a box and then go to this add slash reorder drop down menu. So here are all the resources you guys have access to, except for databases. We're not really going to touch on those because they're only available for admins. Um, and also people don't really use any of those. Um, well, we normally use databases when, um, you know, we have the rest of these to work with. Um, we, we just don't see databases being used really at all. So the most basic feature is just rich text or HTML, um, where we can just enter whatever text we want. So okay. And so we can change the position of this particular feature to go either top of the box or bottom, because this is the only feature right now, this is the only option we have. As we add more features to any given box, we can reorder the features within those boxes. So here's how it looks right now. And then we can also preview the content through this button right here. And then here's what you know a preview of the finished lib guide would look like if it only had this one feature. So, um, and, and for anyone who, um, knows how to work with HTML, we can actually add source code to this one because it's rich text and HTML. So if you want to edit this text here, we have to go to the bottom of the to the button at the bottom right hand corner of this particular feature and select edit. And this is just how you would edit the text. If you want to use HTML, you go to the HTML option and then you know we can add whatever other HTML we want. So 
I mean, I don't want to do a lot right now, um, but in case you want to add any custom fonts or custom styles, you know, things available, you know, things that wouldn't necessarily be available on this, you can definitely do that. Um, so that's rich text. So odds are, you know, this is the feature you'll be using most of all. Um, so that's what I want to get that way first. So we're going to add a couple more boxes um, just to work with different features. So it's the media box. And this will be in RSS box. Okay, so if I wanted to, um, actually this won't be a media box. If I wanted to uh, work with media, just any video you want to embed, um, anything that you can play uh, to your users, all you have to do is go to the media widget section and um, add any code you want to embed. So if I want to um, show some of these devices, all I have to do is go to um, the actual video, click share, and then select the embed option to get the embedding code. Then I copy that over and I just paste the embed code right into the page. And that's how you have the video. So um, this is another really popular feature that's very easy to use um, and definitely bring, can bring a lot to Willow Guide. So and then we're going to add another feature um, just to show a basic link. Um, so let me think what I want to do. Uh, this would be just a link to the trailer. And we're not going to embed the code in here. And we're just going to actually copy this clip. But with the link URL, this is where you would paste it. Um, and you don't really have to do much more here. If you want to add a description, um, whatever uh, you know, whatever other basic info you might want to also add, it's all right here. Um, and you can also choose uh, where you want to display the description. So I think you can display it beneath the actual link, um, or you can uh, append it to the little icon here. So. And we're going to change the position to the bottom, um, you know, from the bottom of the box to maybe after 90s devices. So now that we have more than one feature in a given box, we have uh, more options to work with as far as the position of features go. Um, so we can either have it at the very top of the box after the other feature we have, or at the very bottom of the box. At this point, because you only have two features, you know, these two options are the same, but we still have them to work with. So I'm going to change to after link devices. And then here is how um, the link looks. You know, we can't really do anything about the bullet point, but if we hover over um, this little icon here, we have a little field title description, which you can't do anything about, and then the actual description. So now I also want to add a book from the catalog. So this is how you would, um, upload data from Amazon through a 10-digit ISBN. You can get uh, the title, the description, um, the location date, you know, even the cover art if you just add in the one ISBN number. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just, this isn't from the 90s, but I'm just going to use it. So when you find the book you want to include on your lip guide, all you have to do is scroll down to um, the ISBN numbers. So That's, right, we're gonna use this one. Okay, just a book, just something. Okay, so, and I also want to bring this up too. Um, if you want to use, you know, any, any book for your catalog, you have to first make sure that you can get specifically the ISBN 10 number, because without that specific ISBN, you can't upload any of the other data um, you'd be able to. So here we're just going to enter 10 to ISBN, and that's all you have to do here. Just click get book info, and you have everything you need. Um, you still have to enter the call number, the URL that you used, um, 
but everything else, you know, it, it already does the work for you. So I want to add this too. This is how, um, with the description and all, all the information added, like this would look. So another um, thing your professors will be looking for and that will tell you about is that if you um, choose to upload books to the catalog, which you'll have to, you cannot, you will not be able to use the descriptions given, um, you know, in, in Amazon or anything else you use to um, pull the book data. You will have to write your own kind of annotation. Um, so that's just something to remember. Um, but it, it, does, it does get that for you initially. So these are the three features I have right now. If I wanted to work with them in general, I could just click reorder and then go all the way to the bottom and select reorder content. So here is how um, the three kind of features are presented. Um, both the link and the book from a catalog are presented as kind of a group. So this is a very easy way. If you have a lot of different links, and, um, links or books, it's a great way to group them together because normally you'll have multiple, you know, lots of each. But it's kind of the same. You can reorder um, features in the same method as you could reorder boxes or pages. It just, you know, just pull down your cursor, move it around. But yeah, and you could also, but one thing, one thing to point out, you cannot move um, any books or links outside their corresponding group. Um, every, you know, any links have to stay in the link group, any books in the catalog have to stay in the books in the catalog group. So we're going to save the order. Um, what else do I want to do? At this point, it's just different features. So and this is supposed to be a little more casual at this point where uh, hopefully you shall, you shall be working on libguides as well. Um, okay. So even though this is child RSS box, um, we can actually change this too. So by selecting the little edit icon on the top left hand corner. So I want this to be a media box. And then this can be the RSS box. And I did want to bring up RSS feeds because um, not many people really know how to use them. Maybe, or a, basically, um, a lot of people know what RSS feeds already without knowing um, what RSS, RSS feeds are directly. Basically, the, this kind of a feature um, is basically that of um, a new, you know, just just a, a feed where. Um, you can get consistent updates from one or more reliable sources. So, you know, there are RSS feeds for the BBC, um, a lot of different podcasts out there. So we're going to add one right now. So this is the one for the Bill Simmons podcast, which um, he, he is a pretty prominent sports journalist. And this is really important too. If you just kind of leave it at this, um, and you want to create the look at that, any um, default um, settings added, it'll just provide a list of every single item in this feed, which is a lot. So um, what you really want to do when working with RSS feeds is, is um, you want to confine every, confine the number of items, just reasonable number. Um, or you can still see uh, the rest of the content of the libguide. So if I want to say three items, then I can really cut that down. So you only have three, and then you can cut down even more by taking the descriptions attached to each post, and you can allow them to be appended to this icon for display purposes. So here it's cut down even more, and if you hover over each information icon or you click on it, sorry, um, you'll get that same exact description. It's just a little less overwhelming. So that's how you work with RSS feeds. And we're just going to go through the rest of them right now with this box. So the ones we haven't touched on now um, are the document, fi document slash file feature, uh, the guy list, and the poll. Um, 
You do have the option to add in remote scripts, but that's if you want to. Um, that that's if you're very if you're very if you're more of a skilled programmer and you want to really work with your own customized version of the slug guide. It is by no means required. Um, I've never even done it. Um, so and that's kind of my area of expertise. So definitely don't worry about remote scripts um, if you weren't absolutely planning on using one. Um, and the same kind of goes with um, Google searches. I mean, with the resources you need to add, having generalized Google searches probably is not the best idea um, when you want uh, your users to kind of look at the results as you have them. So we're going to look at um, the document file um, uh, feature as well as the guide list and poll. So um, this is basically if you have, I mean, compared to the rest of the features you have, I can't imagine how people would need to use this over um, you know, additional features, you know, if you just want to use a link, but if someone, if you want to include like a document of an actual study or something else for not people to really have access to and be able to download it, then this is a great time to actually work with the document. So um, I will be using this document here, like a little thing of references and then and then I'm going to just download this file. and then upload it. Again, you really don't want this to be password protected. Um, people should be able to access document as it is. Excuse me. But then this is what the um, uploading a document will look like. It'll have the same bullet point as you would see with a link, which you really can't get rid of, um, but this is how you would upload a document. So then we also have a guide list um, and a poll. So a guide list is when um, you have, there are a lot of different libguides that relate really well to your topic and you kind of want to bring those up as well, you know, maybe for your further research page. So, you know, here are some other you know, videos and here are some other libguides you can look at. So you would choose a uh, menu selected guides or you could just do it by group, but it's, if you really, um, want to just pick out the look guides you want to use, you want to focus on yourself, you would use menu of selected, you, you'd use this type of um, a guide list, and then you could select any guides you want to work on. So maybe we'll do like a history themed um, guide list. So here are just three to kind of work with. And then uh, we'll keep the position there. So here is what, um, the guide list would look like um, with a specific column width. Um, it's it's the same exact thing that you'd see um, here. Um, you have the same kind of blurb showing the name of the lib guide, the author, when it was last uh, when it was published or last updated, and the number of views. So this is a really a really great thing that we really don't see a lot of people using as far as um, things that could really help them out in providing content for their further research page. And the last thing I want to do um, was the poll. This isn't something you really need to add, but it's some, this is something to consider if you're really, really interested in your topic and you want to keep working on this lib guide and you really are hoping to get constructive criticism um, on your lib guide, where you, know, you also wouldn't be sure if people would contact you about it. So I'm just going to create a, uh, a sample poll here, uh, which movies are you excited to see this year? You can add up to 10 options um, with corresponding URLs for each one. These are not required. So just gonna add a few movies. And here is what the poll would look like. Um, would look like. So um, because this slope guide hasn't been published yet, um, trying to select any of these options now would just lead to the show results button, whether um, whether or not you click submit or show results. So this this would be the same thing right now. So if I click submit now, um, we're not we don't have any votes at all, and that's what's to be expected. Um, we haven't been able to gain any real user input. So 
this might be a silly question, but does it matter if you're using the ISBN 10 or 13? It has to be the ISPN 10. It has to be the 10. That, that is a really great question. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't clear enough about it before. No, but that's fine. If you, just know what the difference was to be quite honest. I mean, that's more like um, publication specifications. Um, but if you try using the ISPN 13, nothing will happen. No, I know, yeah, because that's what I had in there, and then you said that, and I oh. <laughs> fixed it in my own libguide. Mm -hmm. 